Welcome back to another video. It goes without saying that mechanics is one of the most important and popular undergrad courses for engineers. That's why uh, uh, getting the right textbooks can make or break your grade, especially if your professor sucks at teaching and is a jerk. I think that's enough lifting for one day, so let me put this down. I'm sure many of you guys can relate, but don't sweat it because in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about all the engineering mechanics textbooks available on the market. That includes authors like Hibbler, Bear, Bedford, Merriam, Plesha, and Limrunner. I'll first be reviewing all the statics books in this video, and then all the dynamics books in another video. So definitely be sure to check that out as well. At the end of this video, I'll be making a final comparison and recommendations, and hopefully you'll know exactly which book you will need to ace mechanics class. The links to the Amazon pages for all of these books are in the description below, so if you found any to be interesting, definitely check them out. If that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe and smash the like button. Your support goes a very long way and helps the performance of this video. With that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start off with the fifth edition of Engineering Mechanics Statics by Anthony Bedford. This is your standard mechanics textbook that presents the concepts in a fairly organized fashion and in a way that is easy to understand for students just starting out. This book is comprehensive and includes the core concept that you will need to know, including scalars and vectors, forces, systems of moments, objects in equilibrium, structures analysis, centroids and centers of mass, moments of inertia, friction, beam theory, and virtual work. What I like particularly about this book are the concise chapters and example problems provided in each section that demonstrate the applications of key concepts. The level of difficulty is perfect and the solved problems don't make you want to pull your hair out. One caveat I will mention is that this book assumes that the reader has a basic understanding of calculus, physics, and chemistry, so definitely keep that in mind. This book contains a lot of practice problems that can be somewhat challenging and overwhelming, but overall are great problems that will help you develop a deeper understanding of the material and excel on your midterms and Finals. A handful of the answers in the back of this book are wrong, but the bright side is that the step-by-step -step solutions to all of the problems are offered on Chegg. I definitely recommend this book for anyone who likes to learn through doing practice problems. On to the 14th edition of Engineering Mechanics Statics by Russell Hibbler. This is one of the most popular mechanics textbooks for engineers, and rightfully so. This book is super comprehensive, the explanations of all the concepts are exceptionally concise, and there are about four unique examples per section that effectively helps solidify your understanding of the material. Concepts the author covers include general principles of analysis, force vectors, equilibrium of a particle, force system resultants, equilibrium of a rigid body, structural analysis, internal force forces, friction, centroids, moments of inertia, and virtual work. Because there's a huge variety of practice problems at the end of each chapter ranging from simple to hair pulling difficulty, there will be no surprises on your midterms and finals. The full blown solutions for this book can also be found on Chegg. Overall, I really have nothing bad to say about this book and recommend it to anyone for self-study who is preparing for a final or even the fundamentals of engineering exams. I also want to point out that Hibbler published another book called Statics and mechanics of materials. This book threw me off when I first saw it and I wasn't sure if it included everything in his standalone statics book, but it turns out that the book covers only about 70% of the material. What he leaves out specifically is equilibrium of a particle, space trusses, and virtual work. The remaining 30% introduces mechanics of materials concepts, including mechanical properties of materials, stress-strain relationships, axial loading, torsion, bending, shear, design of beams and shafts, as well as column buckling. I recommend getting this book if you only wish to develop a general understanding of statics and mechanics of material concepts from a single book and are reluctant to invest in separate books for these two subjects. The next book we'll talk about is also titled Statics and Mechanics of Materials by a different author named Ferdinand Baer. This is his third edition book that combines the theory behind statics and mechanics of materials into a single text. Overall, it does a good job presenting the core concepts of mechanics of materials. However, because the focus is more on mechanics of materials, the amount of material and practice problems it provides for statics is underwhelming in my opinion. So you are better off just purchasing a standalone statics textbook. 
Although the answers to practice problems are provided at the end of this book, the step-by-step -step solutions are not available on check, so definitely keep that in mind. All in all, I don't recommend this book to anyone who is serious about learning static and would like to do well in this class. Similar to Hibbler, who published a standalone statics book and another that combines both statics and mechanics and materials, Ferdinand Bear also has his own standalone statics book called Vector Mechanics for Engineers Statics. This 12th edition text is very comprehensive and covers all the important mechanics principles in an easy to understand manner where Bear presents a systematic approach to problem solving and arriving at a solution. Principles covered include statics of particles, equivalent systems of forces, equilibrium of rigid bodies, centroids and center of gravity, analysis of structures, internal forces and moments, friction, moments of inertia, and virtual work. What I really liked about this book are the real world case studies that are provided in each chapter to illustrate relevancy and application to the principles of engineering mechanics, such as historical successes and failures of past designs. Additionally, this book includes a plethora of sample problems, a section titled Solving Problems on Your Own, and practice problems arranged in order of increasing difficulty. All solutions are also on Chegg. I definitely recommend this to anyone looking for a clear and succinct mechanics textbook that delivers results. On to the second edition of Engineering Mechanics Statics by Michael Plesha. This book covers the standard mechanics topics, including position and force vectors, equilibrium of particles, equivalent force systems, equilibrium of rigid bodies, structural analysis, centroids, internal forces, friction, and moments of inertia. Although this book does include good example problems, it fails to present the material in a logical and organized way for students just starting out. It also only provides select answers answers to practice problems in the back of the book, some of which are even incorrect. However, the solutions are available on Chegg if this happens to be your mechanics course textbook. Overall, this book is not my favorite, and I don't recommend this to anyone new to mechanics. On to the sixth edition of Applied Statics and Strength of Materials by George Limrunner. This is another text that combines two very broad subjects into a single book, which is never a good thing. I'll start off by saying that this book places more emphasis on mechanics and materials than statics. Static concepts covered include principles of statics, coplanar force systems, analysis of structures, friction, centroids, and moment of inertia. The example problems in this book are scarce and are very elementary level, which is not a bad thing if there were more example problems with varying levels of difficulty. The practice problems at the end of each chapter are exponentially harder than the examples and I would say more than half of this book consists of practice problems and very little explanation is given for how to solve problems. The solutions are however available on Chegg if this is the textbook that your professor has recklessly selected. All in all, I would definitely avoid this book if you are not somewhat advanced in mechanics already. On to the 8th edition of Engineering Mechanics Statics by James Merriam. This book covers all the important static concepts including intro to statics, force systems, equilibrium in 2D and 3D structures, structures analysis, distributed forces, friction, and virtual work. What I liked about this book are the diagrams and illustrations, the speed at which concepts are introduced, and the appendix of static formulas in the back of this book. However, the cons of this book are that there aren't a lot of example problems and the author seems to skip a lot of steps with little explanation. Again, there are a good amount of practice problems in this book, but they are a lot harder than examples and only solutions to odd number of questions are provided in the back. However, the solutions of this book are available on Chegg. If you are just starting out in mechanics, I don't recommend this book as it is disorganized and example problems are lacking in quality and explanation. On the other hand, if you already have an understanding of mechanics and are just looking to brush up on concepts or extra problems to do, this book might be for you. Last but not least is the seventh edition of Schramm's Outline of Engineering Mechanics Statics. Now this is not a textbook, but rather a supplementary textbook. This is a perfect resource for you if you're the type of student who likes to cram two days before an exam or hates reading textbooks and is in need of a Sparknotes type of summary. Topics covered include vectors, forces, coplanar force systems, non-coplanar force systems, equilibrium of coplanar and non-coplanar force systems, structures analysis, friction, virtual work, first moments and centroids, and moments of inertia. The hallmark of this book is that it has 628 full solved exercises, hundreds of examples, 25 problem solved 
solving videos online, and even one final practice exam. I definitely highly recommend this affordable book if you are enrolled in a mechanics course or interested in learning mechanics. Now which of these is the best and the worst book for someone trying to learn and master statics? At the top of my list is Hibbler's 12th edition engineering mechanics statics book. I can't say anything bad about this book because it delivers on all fronts, from the quality example problems and illustrations to the clear, concise explanations and practice problems. If you're new to mechanics, you cannot go wrong with this book. On to my second favorite book. This is a tie between the 5th edition of Anthony Bedford's and the 12th edition of Ferdinand Baer's Statics book. Both of these books feature a wide selection of example and practice problems of varying difficulty covering all static topics and presents them to the reader in an intuitive way. Moving on to the bottom of my list now, my second to least favorites include the second edition of Michael Plesha's and eighth edition of James Merriam's Engineering Mechanics Statics textbooks. Because a good chunk of details are omitted in example problems or information can be perceived as somewhat convoluted for a novice mechanics student. Ranking at the very bottom of my list are all of the statics and mechanics of material textbooks. I can't say these books are bad per se, but they are bad within the context of learning statics as a person with zero knowledge of the subject because the focus of these books is not solely on statics, but to a larger extent on mechanics of materials. But if I had to rank these, the order would be Hibbler's 5th edition, Bear's 3rd edition, and lastly, Limrunner's 6th edition statics and mechanics of materials book. Lastly, no matter which textbook you end up getting, don't forget to pick up a copy of the 7th edition of Schwamm's Outline of Engineering Mechanics Statics book for finals week. Hopefully this review can help you in your quest find the right engineering mechanics textbook. Remember that this is just my honest opinion and that we all have different learning styles. So just because I didn't find a book appealing doesn't mean that it can't work out for you. So let me know in the comments below what's your favorite engineering mechanics textbook and don't forget to check out the Amazon links in the description. As always, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!